Okay, imagine that you're a developer and you've just finished a piece of code that you need to push to production immediately that addresses a crazy security vulnerability, right? So you check this code in and then the first thing that happens in your DevOps pipeline is that this is supposed to do a vulnerability scan, static analysis and security testing, but it doesn't happen for you this time because you're blocked and you're waiting on another application that's been scanning for 72 hours and it's only 10% done, right? So this is a war story that I was talking with a few friends after uh, RSA conference in Singapore back in 2017. And I don't remember who suggested it, but we ended up writing a book on epic failures of DevSecOps, and this story was one of it. So unrelated segue, completely unrelated. If you ever tried to put a security control into a DevOps pipeline, it's like laying on 1,200 gallons of high test fuel lighting a match, throwing it in the air, and waiting to see what happens. So the tool that we used for this static analysis and security testing was abandoned, right? It only maybe scanned 10, 15 applications for a few years, and then somebody got a hold of it and said, hey, let's just throw this out in the enterprise and try to get this going. But what ended up happening is when that build was stuck, the product owners looked at it and said, okay, why don't we just rip this thing out? and just keep pushing this product to production. So that's what they did. And the crappy thing is they didn't even tell the security organization, which was completely uncool. We had no idea that this control was taken out. We had basically no information coming in, and we are wondering why the KPIs weren't showing anymore. So it was definitely very uncool. And for our developers, it was just DevSecOps, or things in uh, production are in the the development environment are working fine, security comes in, throws a stick into it, and uh, everyone just falls out and wipes out on the pavement. So what we ended up doing is working with the developers, and we try to come up with a solution to make uh, the application run a little bit more smoother. So we took that one instance that was being used to scan some of the smaller applications, and we expanded that out and created a huge cluster. And it was a cluster. <laughs> F, to be honest, because we ended up paying more for the instances in Amazon than the licensing of the product itself. So that was a huge problem with us. And we realized it was the wrong tool, right? We, we selected this tool originally to do these small microservices and mobile applications, and now here we were throwing it at this large enterprise application. And the one that was stuck was about 4.8 million lines of code. And we also realized that we were using that tool to scan software from the supply chain that was open source. And there's other tools that could have done this a lot quicker. So it was definitely used in the wrong situation, doing the wrong job. And then scaling, right? <laughs> we, we didn't even think of scaling. And then when we started expanding that cluster out, like I was just mentioning, uh, it, it turned out that we had 40 instances in EC2 running one scan at a time. And we just weren't there, right? Looking back at it, doing a retrospective from a security organization perspective, we really screwed the pooch on this one, right? We weren't there for the developers. We put a tool in, almost like the Phoenix Project, we walked away, and everybody was like, okay, what's going on? So a couple things we needed to do was, first, we need to slow down, right? We need to look at our pipelines, our production pipelines, because every pipeline is production, and see what the tool was doing when we put it in there, and what order we should have done it. And second, we could have looked at what other people in the industry were doing and what kind of best practices were out there and maybe rolled that into our own. And had we done this, we could have realized that we could take a long-running scan and run it parallel uh, rather than having uh, you know, smaller scans or smaller applications that could be in line, right? And what we do is we could correlate that information from those long-running scans back to the original build and put those into our JIRA ticket system or whatever we were using at the time. Third, we really could have had a plan, right? <laughs> we uh, talked about this a lot in Epic Failures DevSecOps is have a plan, right? Don't just put something out there for your developers or your DevOps teams to use and assume it's gonna work, right? We should have had a ability for, <laughs> love Thanos. Um, we should have the ability to cancel those long running scans. Like imagine having your developers have the ability to say, you know what, you are blocking my production build so I'm gonna fail your build because it's been running for a day and a half and then kick it back to you. So, DevSecOps, right? Um, 
you know, never think about tools, never bring them up first when you're looking at implementing security controls in a DevOps, DevSecOps, Rainbow Monkey, Unicorn Pony, or Rainbow Unicorn Monkey Pony, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, think about having your security organization have the same ability to understand how tools affect that pipeline. 